Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Day 360 on our continuing daily updates from the war in Ukraine. Tonight, we are coming to you from the city of Zaporozhia. We're going to be spending a couple of days down here. We've had a few issues that we've got to deal with, and we'll be giving you more about that probably tomorrow. You definitely do not want to miss that update. But as for tonight, we're very saddened because our home city of Khmelnytsky, Ukraine, was struck by two missiles today. We're very happy to report that no one was killed. However, there were two injuries and an incredible amount of damage. But we'll be looking at that a little closer. Tonight, we're going to do a technical update. We have not done one of those in weeks due to the fact that we've been on the road running and gunning, interviews, showing you real images. But tonight, uh, we've really struggled with internet connectivity today. So, I'm going to keep this update concise again. We're not very far, to be quite honest, from Russian positions. And this city is huge, beautiful, very fortified, extremely fortified, and very secure, but we're way down here. So tonight, this is going to be what we have to do. Um, if I keep the file smaller, I can get the stream uploaded. These huge ones, I just do not have the bandwidth to do it right now. So for that tonight, we're going to jump to a technical update give you the update on Khmelnytsky. A friend of mine sent some video of the actual strike location. We're going to share that with you. We also have video of the cruise missiles coming out of the sea, and you will be able to see that and a complete update on all the lines with the maps and technical analysis. So that's where we're going to be tonight for day 360. Once again, I want to thank you for being here, faithfully supporting, faithfully for doing what you're doing. And um, we are approaching the one-year anniversary of this war. And if you do not think that that means anything, then I would encourage you tonight, after watching the stream or tomorrow, wherever you're at in the world, just jump on the internet. Go to Google. Go to Wikipedia and research dictators. Dictators like Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. These people love numbers, they love numerology, they love astrology, they love coinc coincidental things, they love anniversaries. It's the way of dictators. Think, just one example, Adolf Hitler loved the numbers. So these anniversaries, these numbers, these dates that these, dic these dictators love is not by accident at all. So as we approach day 365 or the one year anniversary, anniversary, Ukraine is already releasing information straight from Kyiv, from the level of people like Kaleba, from the president's office. They're saying we are expecting, Podoliak, we're expecting three waves of attacks coming up on this anniversary. Of course, Zhenya has given his opinion that he feels, talking with his sources, that this could be before the 24th, right in front of it. Regardless, we see lots of things happening a tremendous buildup, just like it was before the war started. And tonight, I'm going to be sharing that information with you. So, we shall see, but we'll be here together, working together, supporting each other, and supporting Ukraine. A lot of heroes are around me right now in this great city of Zaporozhia. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your support. Let's jump to the technical update. Now, on the technical side of things, as we were talking about just a few minutes ago in the introduction, um, Russia is building up again quite extensively, and this happened a year ago, and the world just watched it and thought no nothing would happen. Now, once again, right now, confirmed, we can tell you that 450 airplanes, that would be jets, fighter jets, bombers, strategical aircraft, and 300 helicopters are strategically located all throughout this region on Russian territory. The deal about it is they are 200 kilometers across the border, meaning that Ukraine has no way to be able to strike back and get them without behind the lines or on the other side of the border sabotage. So they are in strategic locations that place them in a blanket of safety. These planes are not there for photo opportunities. These helicopters are not there just to say, hey, we're over here. We are very well aware that something is cooking right now in regard to this anniversary that is coming up. Additionally, we know 100% 
43. I'm going to come on down here to Melitopol, but 43 busloads of troops have pushed out of Melitopol, and they're coming up on this line, which would be on the Zaporozhye line. And yes, we are right here tonight. So we see a lot of buildup, and it looks as if, and it's going to happen, folks. It looks as if we're going to see a real push here on this south. Additionally, today, as we spoke about, our home city of Khmelnytsky, way over here, was struck by two missiles. A personal friend of mine, Vladimir Zelensky, who does lots of translation work for us, his dear, dear friend, his home was struck today. And we have some video of that for you where you can see firsthand the power of these missiles that are flying around Ukraine every day. Take a peek at this. Now, where did these missiles come from? Well, we know they were today launched from the sea. They came off nuclear vessels and they were launched. Additionally, these missiles flew directly over Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, once again, completely against any rules of war, and flew and struck on the Additionally, the Kharkiv region, in specific, the city of Kupyansk right here, major, major artillery and shelling is happening up in this northeast quadrant of Ukraine. Huge city here of Kharkiv, where we have been and you have been with us, of course, many times. So we can see it looks like this anniversary, not only are there going to be multiple waves of rocket attacks, but... We see the potential, and I'll change the color for you, we see the potential that there's going to be an added push into these eastern and southern regions. A couple of final things to look at tonight. I'm going to zoom in here to the Zaporozhye region. Of course, this is the city of Zaporozhye, and this is where we're at tonight. Um, right over here is where Inogodar would be and the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. And you can see this entire front line of course, Guliopol, a place of major battles right now. As well, there is a major push coming up into Novopil. Additionally, the city of Orykiv here, extremely hot. And there is a tremendous push coming from the southeast, pushing up into Orykiv. Because why? They would want this road right here. I can tell you over the last few days, Zhenya and I have been spending a lot of time on this road and this whole region here. Um, it's where a lot of our work has been taking place. We're very familiar with what is going on here 
In fact, we've got some more updates on that coming soon. So this is here on the southern front. Additionally, I know everybody wants to know what is happening in Bakhmut. Well, I remind you, the battle for Bakhmut is not only for Bakhmut, but over here, Konstantinivka, Shasivyar. And I can tell you right now, while I am recording this, we are under air alarm here in Zaporozhye. It just went off. I can hear it ripping outside my window. The thing here about Bakhmut is this. We've shared with you from the very beginning of this war. This road right here, the M3 highway, which we have been on and will be on again. This is it. And we can see Russia pushing in on this M3. They're pushing up here towards Chasivyar, of course, wanting to encircle Bakhmut. What is so great about Bakhmut? To be honest, nothing. The city is absolutely destroyed but it is a morale battle. Ukraine holding hard and Russia pushing. If you get even in a little closer, this is the city of Bakhmut. We see that Russia has pushed into some of these zones. There's the M3 highway, and we can see that they are working their way to surround Bakhmut. Ukraine does have positions here. Of course, Russia wants to encircle it, take them out. Ukraine wants to defend. So that is where we are at on the Bakhmut the Bakhmut front. So folks, I want to thank you. Um, this is up to the moment. In fact, right this minute, we're under air alarm here in Zaporozhye. So folks, there you have it. As of right now on day 360, this is the most up-to-date information we have on the war in Ukraine, the front lines, the battles, what's happening everywhere. And you can consider yourself fully updated. So, Jane is actually behind the camera tonight, and um, I'm here, so you will hear him say this with me. We'll tell you this. We thank you for being here. Do not miss tomorrow night, because quite an update coming on something we experienced yesterday, and just want the ability to be able to upload the, the, whole, the whole enchilada, and without bandwidth, just can't do it. So, this is the technical update for tonight. Thank you for being here, and I'll say this, a good night to all. To all a good night.